Hi, I'm Kelsey from Crafting for Weeks, and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the sunflower granny square. Okay, so this is a little bit longer of a video, so I wanted to show you what the square looks like at the beginning, not make you wait till the end. So this is the sunflower granny square that I'm going to be showing you today. I made these for the Penelope blanket, but you can use this pattern for really any project that calls for granny squares. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to weave your ends as you crochet these so that it saves you a little time at the end. And in this particular square, we're going to be using mostly double crochet stitches or a variation of that. And then when we get to the outside border, there's a few extra stitches that we will be using to make it square. So as I mentioned, I made these for the Penelope blanket pattern. And one unique thing about that blanket is that each square has a totally different color combo. So with that in mind, here are the colors that I'm going to be making this square in. I'm using a tan, a mustard, a sagey green, and an olive. And I'm going to be changing colors after each round. So I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook for this one. And I'm going to start with the tan color for the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a circle. Now, if you prefer magic circle to start your projects, you can definitely do that. Um, I don't really like magic circle that much, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to um, do a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain four and join for my circle instead. This is totally a personal preference. There's no like right or wrong way to start your circle. Um, this is just what I like to do. So I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then I'm going to join to that first chain to create a circle. And that is what we're gonna work our first round of double crochets into. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that first chain and I'm going to slip stitch and that's going to make this itty bitty circle of chains. Now I'm going to chain two. This is to start my round of double crochets. And then I'm going to kind of open that little circle of chains I just made to find the center. And it might be a little tight, but you know, just your best once you find it it'll be easier to work into once you get a few stitches in so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to work a double crochet into the center of that chain and I'm going to work 16 double crochets <laughs> into the center it might be a tight squeeze but just you know do your best squeeze them in there as best you can so I am working over this tail right here and this is just kind of going to prevent me from having to weave it in later. I'm going to show you how I, um, you know, really secure it because I feel like working over tails isn't enough. Tails can come loose. So I like to actually work it into a few stitches. I yarn over and I pick up both the tail and my yarn once, and then I just drop the tail and I finish my stitch. So that kind of just works it into an actual stitch so it can't come loose. And then I continue working over the tail for a few more stitches. For I like to do you know two or three double crochets in between. And then I'm going to actually do that again so you'll have a chance to see it again. So I have to spread my stitches out just a little bit. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pick up both the tail and my yarn and then drop the tail. So then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, leaving that tail behind, yarn over, pull through. So then I'm going to just finish working the rest of my double crochets. And you can see how I'm kind of pushing the stitches apart to make sure I have room for all 16. They'll kind of naturally spread out as you finish your square. So you're not gonna have to worry about them being too bunched up. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick pause here to count my stitches because you definitely want to make sure you have all of your stitches. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue working my double crochets into the center, working over that tail as I go. And then once I have all my stitches in there, I will show you how to um, close up your circle. 
So while I get the last few stitches in, I just want to um, tell you why I work my tail into a few stitches. Um, when you're weaving ends, you're gonna go like back and forth a few times and weaving through those stitches kind of just makes sure that your tail is back and forth a few times and won't come loose. Okay, double checked my stitch count and now I'm ready to insert into the first double crochet and slip stitch to join my circle. And that is the end of the first round. So what I'm going to do next is find my scissors really quick and then I'm going to cut this tail. I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of tail to um, work with so I can weave that in. And I'm going to pull it through. And this tail is actually ready to cut, but this one, I'm going to show you how I secure it. So I'm going to find the back loop of this stitch right here and I'm going to be working through back loops only all the way through here so I'm just going to insert my stitch and pull the tail through just the back loop and then I'm going to repeat it on the next stitch inserting my hook and just pulling the tail like in and kind of around that back loop I'm going to do that like four or five or six or however many times I feel like <laughs> um, usually it's about five and then I turn it around and I insert my hook from the back to the front and I wrap it back around. So I'm pulling it back through. So it's kind of just creating like a wrapping kind of motion and it's just going around that back loop. And then once I get it through to where I started, I'm going to just leave it there and then I am ready to work over it. So when I start my next row, I'm gonna work over that tail and it's really just gonna secure it into place. So I'm just gonna go under all of it when I start my next round. And I will show you what I mean right now. So my next color, I'm going to be using this kind of mustardy yellow color. I'm going to um, not work in the exact same stitch. I'm gonna go over like two stitches and I'm gonna insert my hook under there. I'm going to pull up a loop with a long tail and then I'm going to yarn over with both of those pieces and pull it through and then drop the tail and I'm ready to start this next round. So let's make sure we're working with the right piece. I'm going to chain two to start this round and the first stitch is a little different. I'm just going to work a double crochet in the same space. And that finishes my first stitch. The rest are gonna be a little different. Okay, so first we're gonna work a chain one. There's a chain one between each stitch around. We're going to be doing double crochet clusters. And again, chain one between each. And we're gonna be working one cluster in each stitch. And I'm gonna be working over that tail again. So the next stitch is right here. I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, and I'm gonna pull through two. And then I'm going to yarn over, insert the hook in the same space, yarn over, pull through two. And once I'm at this point, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And that completes my cluster, chain one, and ready for the next one. So I'm going to do that again, yarn over, insert my hook. And I'm going under that tail so I can work that my stitch over it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Yarn over, pull, pull through two, again and then pull through all three loops. So this one I'm going to actually work my tail in. I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before. I'm going to pull just that tail just through the first part of the stitch and then drop it. And this is working my tail into the cluster stitch. And for the second half of the cluster I just work it like normal. I don't want my stitch to be too bulky. So you can see how that tail is kind of woven in and hidden there. So I'm gonna move on next stitch, working all of these stitches over the tail. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna work this one into my stitch again. So I'm going to pick up the tail with the yarn and then drop it once it comes through once. So I'm going to pull through two and pull through. Okay, so I've done that twice now. I'm just gonna continue working over the tail around. I'm not gonna work it into any more stitches. Okay, so I'm going to do a two double crochet cluster 
in each stitch and then I'm chaining one in between. I just wanted to take a second to note that I'm doing a two double crochet cluster, which means I'm doing half of a double crochet twice before I close my stitch because later on we are actually going to be working a, another cluster stitch with double crochets, but it's gonna be a four double crochet cluster. So I just wanted to take a second to differentiate the two. Okay, you can see here that I've worked over my tail for quite a few stitches and it's getting short, so I just leave it out the back to trim once I'm done with this round. And as you can see, I'm getting pretty close to the end of this round, so bear with me a second and I will show you how I catch the next tail. So here is the tail that we wove back and forth from the previous round. And I'm just gonna actually pull that over and work a few stitches over the top of that one as well. So as it gets close, I just pull it over and work it over the, uh, um, sorry, work it under <laughs> the last few stitches of the round. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like here. See how it's just kind of hanging out there. It's already woven in. I just want to make sure it's extra secure. So I work my last few stitches over it. So I have just a couple more clusters here before the end of the round. Remember two double crochet clusters is what I'm doing and then chain one in between. As I'm getting close to the end, it's a good time to count your stitches. You wanna make sure you have 16 clusters. And once you get towards the end where you wove in, it gets a little hard to tell where your last few stitches go. So make sure you count. Okay, so I've done my count. I have one more stitch after this. So I'm going to work my last double crochet cluster here. And then I'm going to chain one. Let's do a quick count just to be sure that we have all 16 and we're good to go. So we have our chain one and we're going to join to the space between those first two clusters. And that gives us a nice pretty join. So we're going to snip that leaving about the same amount for the end. And we're going to work that same technique to weave it in. So we're going through the back loops and just pulling that tail through. And then we're gonna go through like um, five, about five stitches should be good. Um, you can do more or less, it's up to you. But I just like it to feel nice and secure. So just a quick review, I'm just inserting my hook from the front to the back under the back loop and I'm pulling my tail around that stitch. And then I flip it over and insert the hook this time I'm working from the back of the stitch. <laughs> so I'm inserting the hooks the same direction, but from the back to the front of the piece, just pulling that tail through. So it's weaving it back and forth, and then I'm gonna work over that tail. So I'm not gonna snip it quite yet. <laughs> I'm gonna start my next round actually. So let's go ahead and get the next color going. Okay, so my next color is this pale sagey green. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it this same way. I'm gonna move over from my join one to two stitches so it's not in the exact same place. I'm going to insert my hook in the space between clusters and then I'm gonna pull up a loop and then I'm gonna yarn over with the tail and the working yarn and secure it. And then I'll drop the tail and I'm going to chain one, two, okay. We're gonna be working those four double crochet clusters, but the first one is just a little bit different. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, and we're gonna pull up and pull through two. And we're gonna do that again. Pull up and pull through two. We're gonna do that three times just on the first one. Pull up and pull through two. So we have four loops on our hook on the first stitch. That chain two is going to count as one of our cluster stitches. So we're gonna go ahead and just do three on the first one. So chain two between, and then we're gonna work into the next chain space between clusters. You don't need to actually work into the chain stitch. You can just work into the space. So yarn over, working over your tail, remember. Pull up a loop, pull through two. Repeat that, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna do that two more times. We should have five loops on our hook when we're done. So here we go. We've done that four times. We have five loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. 
and then we're going to chain two. We're going to chain two between each cluster stitch. So we're going to yarn over to start our next one. And this one we're going to catch that tail again. So remember, pull it up for just the first part of the stitch and then drop it. And so we have pull through two. We're going to yarn over and work the rest of the stitch over the tail, making sure you kind of tuck it back in there. So we're doing yarn over, pull through two, a total of four times in this space. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through all the loops on the hook, chain two. All right, let's do that again. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. We're going to do this four times and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on the hook and then chain two between and then I'm gonna catch the tail again one more time on this one so I'm going to yarn over insert my hook working over just the first part of the stitch I'm gonna catch it in my second stitch this time so I'm pulling up the tail and the working yarn and then dropping the tail pulling through two and then working the rest of the cluster over the tail this is just working that tail directly into my stitches so I don't have to weave it in later. Okay, I'm gonna speed through this section a little bit. I just wanna remind you, work over your tail until it's short enough to drop it. Catch your tail from the previous round when you get close to the end. And don't forget to count your stitches before you end this round. That's really important. You need 16 clusters. Okay, we're getting close to the end here, so let's slow it down. So we have one cluster left. Yarn over, insert, we're gonna work four of those half double crochets. <laughs> and then we're going to finish the double crochets with a yarn over and pull through once we have five loops on our hook. So there we go, yarn over, pull through all, chain two, and then I like to join into the top of my first chain two stitch. That's just where I think it looks the best. So personal preference there, that's where I like my join. I'm going to snip it and we're going to weave the end before we move on to our next round. So same technique, we're inserting the hook from the front to the back. We're just pulling the tail through the back, around the back loop of the stitch. We're gonna do that, you know, five times more or less is up to you. And then we're going to flip our piece over Hold on, we'll do one more. Maybe one, one more. Okay, we're gonna flip our piece over and then we're going to insert the hook from the back of the piece to the front of the piece and weave it back through those stitches working just under the back loops only again. So let me do that a couple more times so we get back to our join. <clears throat> And then once we're back to our uh, original join spot, we're going to, oh, got a little stuck there. There we go. Okay, so there, we're done with this round and we are ready to move on to our last round. Yay, it's looking good so far. Last round, we're using this olive green. Let me get a little piece started here. And we are going to, again, work a few stitches over from our join so it's not in the exact same spot. I'm going to go right here, and we're working in the chain space again. And we're going to attach the yarn the same way. We're pulling up a loop, and we're catching the tail and the working yarn once, and then dropping the tail after it's secure. So for this round, we're going to be working our border that makes it a square. So start with a chain three. The chain three counts as your first treble crochet. So now we're going to yarn over twice because we're working a treble. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through the last two. So we're going to work another treble crochet in that chain space. So we need three of these for the first half of our corner. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So this is half of our first corner. We're gonna chain two for the corner space. And then in that same chain space, we're gonna work three more treble crochets. So remember, a treble crochet is yarn over twice, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. 
So I'm just assuming that you're familiar with the stitch, but just in case you're not, <laughs> that is what it is. So we have three more of these worked into that corner space. We're going to chain one. Now, I don't carry my tail because you can see it on this round. After I do that first corner, I just drop it. I'm going to weave it in later. So for the next space, I'm going to work three double crochets. So one and two and three. And we're going to hit chain one. And then in the next chain space, we're going to work three half double crochets. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with these stitches. If you're not, I have another video about that, but um, I'm not going to go over them here. <laughs> so chain one, and then in the next space, we're going to be working three double crochets. If you're familiar with traditional granny squares, the pattern is probably already starting to look familiar to you. So in the next space, we have our next corner. So we're going to chain one and then we're going to work three treble crochets to make the first half of our corner. And we're working these all in the same chain space. Let's one more treble crochet. And then we're going to chain two for the corners. And then we're going to work three more trebles in that same chain space. This will be the second half of our corner. So one and two and three. Oops, here we go. A little more yarn. Okay. Three. Okay. <laughs> so this is the first side and it's already starting to look like a, a traditional square. So here we go. We're going to continue that pattern over the next side. So next is a chain one and then double crochets, three double crochets in the next chain space. Remember we're chaining one between each little cluster of granny stitches, half double crochets in the next chain space, and then chain one, three double crochets in the following space. And finally, we are back to our next corner. So we're doing treble crochets in this one. So we're going to start that corner by working three treble crochets into that chain space. And as we go around this square, well, this circle and turn it into a square, we're going to follow that pattern of treble crochets in the corner and then double, half double, double, and then the corner. So remember, chain two, and then we're going to do three more treble crochets in this corner before we move on to the next side. And one more. Okay. So we're going to do our next side. Make sure you have your chain one before you start your double crochets. So we're going to three double crochets into the next stitch. Sorry, the next chain space, not into the stitches. <laughs> so three double crochets. <clears throat> and then we're going to chain one, three half double crochets. And you probably guessed it after those. We're going to chain one. And then we're going to work three double crochets. After this set of double crochets, we will be at our last full corner to work. We have one corner and one side left. So let's start this corner with three treble crochets. Whoops. There we go. There's one, two, and three. So we're going to chain two. Each corner should have two chains. And we're going to work three more treble crochets into that same chain space. We're getting so close to the end. I know you can just feel the anticipation. So last treble crochet in this corner. Okay. Chain one. I'm going to pause for a second and see where my tail's at. Okay. And I'm going to work three double crochets into this next chain space. Okay. One, two, three and chain one. 
Next we have those half double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, I'm gonna catch that tail from the previous round on this one, and I'm just gonna work this last set of three double crochets over it. Remember, it's already woven in. We're just securing it for good measure. So we're doing one. Make sure, whoops, got it tangled on my stitch there. Hold on. <laughs> Reverse, let's try that again. Okay, yarn over and work our last two double crochets. Okay, we're gonna chain one and then I like to join to the top of my first chain three. That's where I think it looks the best. It's a personal preference. You can do it however you want. Just make sure you're doing. <laughs> looks nice. We're gonna snip that end and pull it through. And we have to weave this one like traditionally. So I'm gonna show you how to weave the actual end in. <laughs> okay, you're going to need a tapestry needle. You're going to, this is actually too much yarn. Just thread that onto your tapestry needle. And then I like to close my stitch securely by just going back through the top of that stitch again one more time. And that just kind of really like tightens the stitch so it's not going anywhere. Then I go down through the center of my treble crochet. This is how I just kind of hide my end into those stitches of the same color. Then I'm gonna come back up through the next treble crochet. I don't go all the way through the top, I come out like right near the top. So, and you can see I'm working, I'm weaving from the back so you can't really see it from the front. And then I'm going to come back down through the third treble crochet. I like to go at least three directions when I'm weaving ends, so. That's why I'm coming up and down. And I'm coming just like out the bottom of all of those stitches to the side. And then I'm gonna be done with that one. Just gonna kinda tug my stitches so that it's not warping them. Then I'm going to grab my next end. Have to make sure you grab the right one so you don't weave the same end twice. So here's my end. I'm going to thread it onto my tapestry needle. And then I'm gonna kind of do the same motion. I'm gonna go up through a treble crochet stitch. I come out near the top. I don't go through the exact top of the stitch. And then I come up, down through the next. So, again, I like to go through at least three. So here's one more. And then um, I'm actually gonna come back down one more, so I'm coming back down that second one again and just pulling the tail out the same place as I put the first one. So you can't see that from the front, which is what you want. It's nice and secure, and then we just snip those tails off. And while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and snip the rest of these. These are all woven into stitches and worked over and they're secure, so I don't have to worry about them. I'm just gonna snip them all off at once and not have to go back and weave however many ends I just snipped off. <laughs> okay, last one. And we are done. This is what it looks like from the front. So I'm making these for the Penelope blanket, like I mentioned. So I'm going to be using a continuous join as you go. Um, if you don't wanna do that, you wanna do one more round of a traditional granny stitch around the edge, which is working three double crochets in each chain space, chain one in between, and then doing that twice in the corners. And that would make it one round wider and you would use a traditional join instead of a continuous. So let me show you some of my other squares that I did for this one. I'm using different colors for each square. So I'm using five colors and a different color combo for each. And these are all gonna be joined with white. I think it's gonna look really great. So if you are looking for that pattern, head over to my blog, craftingforweeks.com. Thanks for hanging out with me today and happy crafting.